All right, welcome to the ninth lecture. Um, this week we will be talking about the gang of four patterns, so we will continue with, with object-oriented design. Uh, so this lecture and the next lecture will probably be uh, devoted to those. And then we have uh, two lectures left. Uh, the uh, first lecture next week, we will talk about more general object-oriented des oriented design principles, uh, and you will see how we have actually already been applying them and how the uh, patterns in the course have actually been kind of like instances of these uh, uh, principles. <coughs> Uh, last week we finished off the uh, grasp patterns. Um, so, yeah, I think we have some. Uh, yeah. Um, I thought that my materials would show up here, but they didn't. So we will take the materials from here instead. And we did the class diagram, I think, last thing we did. Um, so it looked uh, like this. And I've actually added the uh, rest of the functionality in the uh, blackjack game. And the design is, well, it's still the same. And that is always a good sign that you can, oops, nothing is being shared. Sorry about that. So, um, and that's always a good sign that you're kind of like your design uh, is not revolutionary changed when you add functionality that it's supposed to uh, be added. So if we, we take a look at the code, uh, most of the changes are in the dealer class. Uh, this class is where I've added functionality for handling the hit and handling the stand. So when the dealer or when the player selects to get a new card, we have some checks and then, well, the player gets a new card, basically. So we take the top card from the deck and show it and give it to the player. And consequently, when we have stand, we have a small algorithm here that says basically that uh, when the dealer score is, is below 17, he continues to take another card. Um, and we have some uh, helper functions, more or less, to decide when the game is over and to decide if the dealer is the winner of the game. And in the controller, of course, we have some uh, handlings of, of uh, the system events of that the player wants to hit and that the player wants to stand. Uh, nothing really revolutionary there. And we have this quite, uh, I won't say advanced, but, but quite uh, so, some new code here to, uh, to present the state of the game in a good way. So we can... Um, present some special instructions depending on the state of the game. Have we started a game already? Well, then maybe we should not be able to start a new game, so we have a special menu for that. And also the actual code is, is, uh, is in start, start game. So we have this check here also. And this is something that is often often uh, the case that you have like uh, the, the actual check is in the model, but you kind of like need to do this check also in the user interface because you would like to have a, a nice user interface that does not display options that you cannot really perform anyway. And we have some presentation also of the winner of the game. So if the game is over and we have a winner, we should, should display this. 
and also then the view of course has gotten a little bit more uh, code in it to uh, present the menu and depending on on the state of the game we would like to just show hit and stand if the game is already started if we don't have a started game well then you can select to start a new game or quit and not hit and stand and we also have the uh, presentation of the winner so it should look something um, like this so if I select to hit nothing happens uh, if I select to stand nothing happens if I select to uh, start a new game, we get the scores and we get the hands and I should probably stand on that. Um, the dealer will probably get a 10, so I guess the dealer will, will win, but hitting on 19 is risky. Yeah, the dealer won because he had a 10, so he got 20. Uh, so start a new game and here we cannot start a new game again nothing happens uh, you just have hit and stand actually as options oh 18 yeah I think we need to do that ah so we got got over 21 and then the dealer automatically plays actually this is the most uh, nice implementation of the blackjack I've done so far in, in this course uh, usually we're not that this advanced to have a new kind of like menu with for different states and stuff like that so uh, it's all good in that department and the code is of course on github if you want to check it out and uh, explore it for yourselves or add something maybe you find some problem in it there probably is so uh, feel free to download and check it out yeah, uh, there. So, uh, we have actually done all the requirements. We can play the game. Uh, we can have hit and we can have stand. And we have also final result is, is presented that the dealer or player won the game. Um, so the application is more or less done. However, now we get a new requirement. So to start the game, we have a variation. In Europe, the dealer actually gets, does not get a second card. But in America, he gets the hidden card, and this is the implementation we have right now. So the question then is, how should we incorporate this new variation of, of uh, starting the game in a good uh, way? Any ideas? Uh, yeah, uh, of course we could we could we could, um, we could let the user decide uh, uh, when the uh, which which version of the game should be should be played. But I think we should should uh, be uh, even more simplistic than that. That that maybe this is something that we would like to we would like to be able to ship different versions of the game to different types of customers. So it's not an option for the user to select what type of game to play, but rather it's our game is to po supposed to be able to support um, both of these types of playing 
but it's okay to recompile the game to get these two different versions. So it's more of a design question. Uh, we, we could later maybe add if, if the users could select to play different types of games. But first things first. So how could we uh, change the, the code to, uh, to uh, incorporate this? We get a suggestion here to create a new controller and view for both of them. Um, I think that's not actually necessary right now, at least. I think the, uh, the interaction of the game is, is, is the same. You can, the user can still just select to start a new game, hit and stand, or quit. So we don't need to, to change anything there. Uh, also, the, the view is, should be able to, to uh, show cards. It's, it's nothing different there either. So uh, we, uh, we don't really need to do that. So okay, okay. Let's let's take a look at the code. We can always go back and look at the code. Uh, so it's basically this part here that needs to be changed. Start game. And we are we are kind of like supposed to remove this. Now we're the European dealer. Now we're the American dealer. So, it, well, not a huge change. So, uh, leave comment. Good, bad. Yeah, probably not the best thing to kind of like remove stuff from the code by commenting it. So this is a no-no. If is add a member variable attribute, maybe send this attribute into the dealer when we start the game. And we can have this if statement here that says, well, if I'm the American type of dealer, then I should do this, otherwise not. Good, bad, yay, nay. I don't like it. Me neither, <laughs> but but why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The the, uh, the the code would still actually be there in the uh, the final version in in the European game, and and having kind of like this dead part of the code is, uh, well, we could, we could imagine a case where this uh, wastes some resources. So th that could, could indeed be, uh, be um, an argument. So uh, in, in C++, we have the preprocessor. So it can actually remove code entirely, so it won't be compiled even. And that could be an option then. You, you can like define that, OK, this part of the code should not be, be uh, even compiled when we have this variation of the game. So th there are some flavors to this. Uh... Yeah, uh, we, we have a question here about the American and European and the user interface. We, we're not worried about the, the user interface right now. So it's not the dealer's choice, the, the player's choice to choose uh, which type of game he wants to play, uh, for the moment at least. Well, it adds complexity. Well, we, we could imagine maybe this is a quite a simple case, but we could imagine that we have a trickier case, and maybe we would have several kind of like if statements in here. Maybe we have more variations to start the game. 
uh, then we would need to add another kind of like if statement in this part of the code and it would be kind of like messy. So, uh, even though this is, is fine uh, and would work, both versions would work, I think, uh, we should maybe think a little bit more about it. So, basically, we could think about this as the protected variations pattern. We have some variation uh, or change, and we would like to design uh, parts of the system to not impact other parts. So we would like to identify the points of variation, encapsulate the points in an interface uh, in the broadest type of type of sense. So what we would like to do is kind of like extract this uh, play game and put it in in different uh, parts of the code. And to do this, we can also use polymorphism. Because we would not like really to have this if statement. We would not like to vary behavior based on the type of dealer. So we have protected variations that says encapsulate in, in some kind of interface. And we have this uh, polymorphism pattern to say, well, you should assign the responsibility to polymorphic operations. And avoid extra states, avoid this attribute is American dealer. Avoid type information and reflection. So these two patterns, well, then maybe suggest, uh, and we also have it in, in the chat here, to create some, some kind of abstraction and have this in this start game in a polymorphic operation. So let's just do that. many languages and we have kind of like the same thing here so let's copy And for now, let's just copy this whole uh, operation. Starting to 
so something like that we should get a compilation error because we cannot uh... ah okay cannot instantiate an abstract class so let's try it with the European type of dealer and we will just remove this last part of the code here. And we can here see that, well, the dealer did not get a, a second hidden card uh, as uh, he should in the uh, European version of the game. And we can uh, seamlessly, I hope, uh, just instantiate the American version. compile and run and we get the hidden uh, card uh, second card to the dealer once more and <clears throat> of course we have some uh, code copying between these two um, so maybe this should should be refactored in in some way and, and we could have have a, a base class maybe for for both the American dealer and the um, the European dealer to just have this the small small code variation at the end as the uh, difference. But it will be a little bit maybe just adding more classes on code right now and not really proving my point so but in a real case I, I would not like the the, the code uh, duplication here but uh, for now we need to uh, live with it I think so we could avoid having this kind of uh, kind of um, if statements and and uh, selection of algorithm based on, on type uh, because this adds complexity into the dealer class um, and given enough such uh, checks it will become really really complicated uh, so we, we could use polymorphism and we could use protected variations to achieve this instead is this super clear why didn't we have to change anything in the the uh, the um, the uh, the view or or the uh, controller. We did not need to touch those. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're not dependent on on which version of the game. We actually play they don't care they just have the well as long as I get a dealer I'm fine I don't really know care if this is the American version or the European version so uh, and this is this is uh, kind of neat at least I think so because we can we can change what happens kind of like behind the scenes, but the, the client, the user of these uh, interfaces does not need to know about how is this exactly done inside of it. So we have this concept of encapsulating variation and the clients do not need to know about that at all. Uh, so uh, if we take a look at our class diagram once more, we have actually added two classes here.
happen there. So let's just leave it. And this one is actually abstract now. So I think we have some, some way of showing that also. And super clearly, this one became in uh, italics. So um, this is the new, uh, the new um, class diagram after these changes. And we can also here see that, well, the controller should not be be affected by adding a new type of, of uh, way of starting the game for, for these, uh, since it's only dependent on the dealer and the player. Questions? Nothing. Great. So uh, we will look uh, some more into this uh, this problem as we go along, but uh, right now we will just shift focus to um, the gang of four patterns. Uh, so, all right, gang of four, uh, Gamma, Elm, Jonsson, and Blisides. Uh, those are the uh, bearded guys that, I guess they're bearded maybe now, uh, that, that uh, started the whole um, movement of using patterns in software. And they got their inspiration from a guy named Christoph Alexander that wrote a book about patterns in building architecture. Because he saw that well, in building architecture, we often have these recurring problems. And we have kind of like these standard solutions to these problems. We have a question here also in the chat. Is there any high cohesion on these classes? I have a problem to understand it. Um, high cohesion is typically something that you want. You want your classes to be cohesive and do maybe only one thing. So maybe you have even, even increased cohesion uh, a little bit. Um, the dealer, uh, in, in, instead of adding this attribute of, of uh, switching on, on type of, of uh, rule to use, this attribute would only be used in this start new game operation. And that would be an indication that, well, this is really not that cohesive as it should be. So if we, if we look at this, this part of the, the dealer class, the deck, the deck is used in, in I think, more or less everywhere. Uh, I know in that it's used in this operation by proxy. It's used in, in um, not in get score, but the hand is used in, in in hit, the deck is used. In stand, the deck is used. Uh, so if we would have added this attribute, is American dealer, this attribute will only have been used in start game. And this is an indication that, that the class is becoming less cohesive. You have some attributes that are, that are only used in some operations and another set of attributes that are only used in, in some other operations. So by, basically, that is the uh, way to at least try to measure um, cohesiveness. So but, but judging cohesiveness based on responsibilities is also maybe something that you need to kind of like practice and and indicators of a, a less cohesive class is could could also be that it's quite large because we add a lot of a lot of responsibility to it and maybe these responsibilities are not that related uh, we, we we could could uh, if if you remember back when we had separated the player and dealer classes also. Uh, it's the player in, why isn't that? Uh, 
should be present here. Uh, we had this hand concept, and we had the operations that, that worked on the hand. Uh, and these uh, were duplicated in both the dealer and player, and then we actually had the, the dealer was not uh, as cohesive because we had these operations that only worked on the hand, and we had the other set of operations that used the deck a lot. But using uh, inheritance here instead, we could get a cohesive player class, we could get a more cohesive dealer class, and we could uh, also uh, reuse the code uh, in, in, in a better way. All right, did I answer the question? A little bit, at least. So anyway, back to the uh, design patterns of Gamma, Helm, Johnson, and Blisida. So they, they took inspiration from, from uh, building architecture and, and a book of, on patterns there, and they saw that well, we have this kind of like similar situation in software also. We, we have designed and, and developed large, big systems, and we seem to run into the same types of problems. Um, and we can solve these problems in, in kind of like the same way. So they wrote this book about elements of reusable object-oriented software. So uh, I also have it here. You should check it out uh, if you're interested in patterns. The course literature uh, has some of the patterns from this book also in it. And for you guys at, at the classroom, you can take a look at it. It's uh, kind of old, but I think the uh, principles still apply. And that's something that is good. You have quite a large example in it also on, on how to use design patterns. And this could also be good. The notation in it, as it's old, is not UML, but some other notation, but it's uh, quite similar. So, but we will take a look at, at some of these um, patterns. And we have a few categories of patterns in, in the book. We have uh, creational patterns, and if you remember to the grasp pattern, we have the creator pattern there that says, well, if this object contains objects of another type, maybe it should be the creator of these objects also. And we have some more creational patterns in the Gang of Four book. Uh, and the idea is to help create objects encapsulate direct instantiation. So instead of using new object, blah, 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 uh, we can use a creational pattern to encapsulate this in some good way, if we need it. And the uh, patterns in, in bold is are, are patterns that we will at least touch upon in the course. So we have abstract factory, builder, factory method, prototype, and singleton. Uh, singleton is discussed in the book and also actually in the suggested solution for wor workshop number two. So I won't be talking about singleton during the lectures. We have structural patterns. Uh, patterns that help you structure classes and compose objects in, in different, uh, ki different kinds of ways to achieve your goals. And here we have adapter, bridge, composite, decorator, facade, flyweight, and proxy. Maybe some of these names kind of like ring a bell. Uh, they have tried to name it after uh, stuff that, that is uh, present in, in, in the real world. And maybe you have had an electrical socket adapter in some, some form. And basically what the adapter uh, is for is for converting one type of class into another type of class. And that's exactly what the uh, adapter for the electrical sockets also does. It converts some kind of current and, and voltage to uh, another type of voltage. And maybe I've also had this uh, found kind of like these names in, in uh, frameworks or, or uh, uh, stuff like that that you have used. And we have behavioral patterns. 
that ha helps provide varying behavior. Uh, and in this uh, department, we have a lot of patterns. Chain of responsibility, command, interpreter, iterator. Iterators should sound familiar, at least, I think. Uh, and this is a concept that has maybe even moved into uh, programming languages uh, that you get iterators for collections automatically, more or less. Uh, mediator, memento, observer. We have talked about observer already. State, strategy, template method, and visitor. So, to put this, uh, these patterns in some type of context, we will continue a little bit further with the, uh, with the blackjack game. So, we have even more uh, new requirements. Too bad it became a one there, but automatic lists are like this. So anyway, we should support many types of rule variations. We have this rule va variation for starting new, the new, a new game. We already have implemented the variation there for American and European. We could imagine more ways to start this. We can have rule variations for who wins the game. For example, who should win if, if they have an equal score? This could be a, a way to vary the rules in, in the game. We could have different types of rules for when the dealer actually takes a card. Should he take a card on uh, up to 18? Should he take cards just to 15? Uh, we have actually a a rule that is called soft 17, that is about what the dealer should take a card when he has 17 if he has an ace that is counted as 11. Because if he then gets a card uh, to uh, become uh, with a value 10, the, the ace could be counted as 1 also. So he would still have uh, 17. This is actually the rule that you will implement for workshop number three. But we can imagine having these uh, variation, uh, points of variations for, for different kinds of rules uh, in, this, <coughs> in this game. <coughs> and if we look at the code, it would more or less mean that, well, we have some variation of this, because this is these right now a very simple algorithm of the dealer taking a new card as long as, as he has not gotten a score that is uh, higher than uh, 16. So if the score is below 17 he just continues to, to get uh, this should of course be removed. He just continues to take cards. And also for uh, this part of the code, who is the winner in different types of situations? And we could imagine uh, several kinds of, of uh, scenarios here. If you have the ace of spades, you're automatically the winner. And stuff like that. So we will have multiple points of variation uh, for these rules. And, and we should also find a design that supports uh, adding new types of variations that we really don't know about right now. And I leave that problem to you to figure it out during the break, how this could be solved. Uh, so if there are no immediate questions, let's take 15 minutes of a break. <coughs> 